Now we're going to talk about critical squares. What is a critical square? A critical square is a square meant for your king. If your king can land on a critical square, you're winning. If your king cannot get onto a critical square, it's a draw, a stalemate. Consider this position here. It's white to move. Is it winning? Have a look at it. Is white winning this position? Well, if you know what the critical squares are, you could answer this right away. So what are the critical squares? Well, let's have a look. This rule for critical squares applies to all the pawns from B to G. So all those pawns, except for the two rook pawns, they have their own separate critical squares, and we'll look at them in the next video. But for all the pawns from B to G, the critical squares are the same. They are the squares two ranks ahead of the pawn. In this case, c4, d4, and e4. They are ahead of the pawn and to the right and to the left, two ranks ahead. So what this means is that if your king can land on any one of those critical squares, you're getting a queen. Isn't that awesome? But if your king cannot get to those squares, it's a stalemate. If the pawn moves up the board, the critical squares also move up the board. Now they are c5, d5, and e5. And further, a pawn on d4, the critical squares are, can you guess? Yep, c6, d6, and e6. And on the fifth rank, the critical squares change just a little bit. There's actually more of them. So now once a pawn reaches the fifth rank, the critical squares are both one and two ranks higher. So in this case, it's c7, d7, e7, and c6, d6, and e6. So with this pawn on d5, if we get our king to any one of those squares, we're going to get a queen. And on the opposite side, if our king cannot get to one of those critical squares, we're not getting a queen. It's a stalemate. And when the pawn moves up the board, the critical squares also move up the board. And you can guess the pawn on the seventh rank, all the critical squares are right around the pawn. We need our king on one of those squares in order to get a queen. Let's do a quick review and then we'll see this in action so you can see how it works. Here we have a pawn. This is an F pawn. And this pawn's going to move up the board. Watch how the critical squares change. All we need to do is get our king into any of those squares and we're winning. So let's go back to that position. Remember the position I showed you a couple minutes ago? This is it. I asked you, is white winning? It's white to move. Well, now you know what the critical squares are. It becomes a little more obvious. Can white get to those critical squares? Let's have a look and see what happens. White makes a jump for it. And black steps in. And notice that he now blocks all the critical squares. So what does white do? Well, white may just try to push his pawn. And remember, once you push a pawn, the critical squares also change. What are the new critical squares? Well, we're on the fifth rank. So now the critical squares are all these. Look at them. There's two rows of them. Now, if you're the white player, you may think, oh, I just need to get into one of those. Can the black king really stop me from getting into all six of those squares? Well, let's see. He stays on the same file as the queening square. This is very important because sometimes you might be the defender in a position like this. If you're playing black, you need to know how to defend, especially if the white player, your opponent, doesn't know what the critical squares are and you do, you're going to be able to draw this game. Black to move. Black takes the opposition. You see this? And now white cannot enter those critical squares. And if you're black and you're playing this position, you know exactly what to do. Stop white from getting into the critical squares. So from here, white may say, well, he could go back behind the pawn, but then black is just going to step up and take the opposition again. So let's say white calls check. He just moved his pawn. Now remember, what does it mean when you move a pawn? The critical squares also move. Now the critical squares have completely shifted and white is even further away from the critical squares. So where's black gonna go right here? Well, this is very important. Remember, whenever black goes backwards, 
he stays on the same file as the pawn. What were to happen, let's go back, what were to happen if black went to c8 instead of d8? In this variation, we're going to look at what happens if black goes to c8 instead of d8. Remember, we talked several times about if you're black and you're defending a position like this, whenever you go backwards, make sure you stay on the same path as the queening square. Stay on the same file. So instead of going to the queening square and, and staying along the file of the pawn, black goes to c8. And this is a blunder. Uh-oh! What was I thinking? White now takes the opposition. Now look at this. White now opposes the black king. And it's black who has to get out of the way. And from here, white simply pushes his pawn. And notice that white pushed a pawn to the seventh rank without calling check. That's winning. If you push a pawn to the seventh rank with check, it's a stalemate. Here, white pushed his pawn to the seventh rank, and there's no check, so black has only one move. He's got to get out of the way. Black comes here, and finally, white enters the critical square. Woohoo! It's about time. Finally. And you only need to be on one critical square. But now that white's on a critical square, he's getting a queen. Black has to get out of the way, and there's our queen. As we saw in the variation, if black goes to c8, it's a disaster. So he's not going to do that. Black goes to d8. And what is white going to do? He obviously can't push his pawn or black will just take it. So white moves up, hoping desperately to get into those critical squares. I want in, I want in, he says. Black says, no you don't. Black takes the opposition. How's white going to get in there? What does white do? Well, maybe white decides to push his pawn. Check. And black goes right onto the queening square. And now look, how does white protect his pawn? White has only one move to protect his pawn. He has to guard his pawn. So white goes to d6 and voila, stalemate. You see, white never got into the critical squares. Because the white king never got into a critical square, it's a stalemate. You see that? Okay, let's have a look at another position. Here, let's say white pushes his pawn. And he's going to push his pawn first. Now, we know what the critical squares are now that the pawn is on d5. The critical squares are even higher up the board. How in the world is the white king going to get in there? Notice that if your king is behind your pawn, chances are you're not going to get a queen. The king needs to be in front of the pawn. Wait, pawns! Don't leave me! Wait up! Put the king in front of your pawn. That's how you get a queen because the critical squares are in front of the pawn, not in the back of the pawn. So black easily blocks this. He comes into the critical squares, and now he goes down, and he just blocks. Blocks white from even getting to c5. So maybe white takes the opposition, but that's okay with black. He backs up. Remember that you back up on the same file as the queen. So black takes a step back. That's quite okay. Now white comes in and says, I need to get into these squares. Black says, nope, no can do, no critical squares for you. White pushes his pawn. Black goes back. Again, he goes back along the queen, the queening square, the same file as the pawn. White steps up. Black takes the opposition. White pushes his pawn. Black lands on the queening square. Stalemate. White was never able to get into a critical square. Unless you can get onto a critical square, you're not going to get a queen.